a crazed head chef invites diners to a one-of-a-kind culinary event. Tyler Ledford and Margot Mills wait on a dock. A boat comes soon, and the couple, along with other exquisite guests, board it. Shortly after, they all arrive at Hawthorne Island, where the matra, named Elsa, welcomes them. Elsa mentions a different name for Tyler's escort, and Tyler apologises to Margot for the mix-up. Margot says that everything is fine and not to worry about it. Elsa then takes the guests on a little tour, showing the beach, forest and pasture areas. The place looks lovely, and the guests take a look at the smokehouse, where meat is smoked in traditional Nordic fashion, and also the cabin, where the staff rests. During their tour, Tyler sees the chef's cottage, to which Elsa informs him is off-limits to everyone. Entering the restaurant, Margot sees an old man, with whom she obviously shares something, as they both avoid eye contact. While the cooks prepare their first dishes, everyone is seated and Margot notices the name of the woman Tyler was supposed to bring with him, but instead came with her. Elsa tells everyone that the chef's dishes aren't to be photographed because he believes that their beauty lies in their ephemeral nature. Tyler goes in to have a closer look at the preparations, showing that he too knows some stuff about this business, even though he's not a professional. The chef walks out of the kitchen and stares in quite an unsettling way at Tyler. Amuse bouche. The first dishes are now served, an extraordinary creation made by cucumber melon, milk snow, and charred lace. The guests enjoy their first course with lively discussion and some arguing. Margot asks Tyler what it is he loves about this whole ordeal, and Tyler replies that while other people idolize musicians and athletes, he instead adores the fine art of cooking. He goes on and on about how many cooking shows he has watched, and Margot finds him to be so poetic, or maybe not. First course. The chef tastes the sauce and introduces himself to the guests. His name is Julian Slowick. He mentions what they're about to eat and begs them to taste rather than eat. A slight difference between simple hunger and appreciating culinary masterpieces. He tells them that the menu is too precious to just eat it. He advises them to savour and relish the ingredients and then calls his cooks to serve the dishes. The first course is called The Island. Plants from around the Hawthorne Island are placed on rocks from the shore. They are covered in barely frozen, filtered seawater that will flavour the dish as it melts. Julian mentions that humans are meaningless, whereas nature is timeless. Tyler finds his speech too moving and sheds a tear. Lillian Bloom, a food critic, and Ted, her editor, mention to each other that they will literally taste the ocean. On the other hand, George, a movie star who is no longer successful, and his assistant, Felicity, don't really appreciate the food. The same goes for Soren, Dave, and Bryce. Second course. Julian narrates the history of bread throughout the centuries. Being the food of the common man, Julian underlines that his guests are not the common man, and therefore there isn't going to be any bread on this course. The second course is called Breadless Bread Plate and it contains six savoury accompaniments without bread. The guests find this amusing. Margot thinks it's insulting, but Tyler keeps on praising the chef as a rule-breaker, storyteller, second-to-none culinary creator. Julian, who has acute hearing, tries to wipe out any negative impressions about the food and sends Elsa to make things right. As the three business partners request bread, Elsa says that they won't get any, and then whispers to one of them that he will eat less than he desires, and more than he deserves. Tyler drops a glass and causes the chef to come over to their table. Julian politely asks Margot to eat her food, but she refuses. Julian walks away and whispers something to an elderly guest who is eating alone, making the rest watch in mild amazement. Third course. Wine is served, and the chef introduces the next course by referring to it as a memory. Julian brings up a disturbing childhood memory of his and reveals to everyone that the old woman who is sitting alone is his mother. The chef tells how he was forced to stab his drunken father with a pair of scissors in order to save his mother. That, he says, was a very memorable taco night. The dishes are served. They contain house-smoked braised chicken thigh al pastor, accompanied by heirloom masa tortillas, which have been made using a laser engraving machine. Lillian sees that her tortillas depict restaurants that she has reviewed badly and ended up closing. Could this be a hint of some sort? Each guest has their tortilla specifically designed for them, showing something of their relative past, memories. 
Tyler's tortillas show him taking photographs of the dishes there, and he thinks now that he's done for. Soren, Dave, and Bryce get tortillas with their illegal bank accounts in the Cayman Islands. They ask for an explanation for this, and Elsa says the chef never reveals his recipes. The guests are upset with these blunt revelations. Tyler insults Margot for acting childish, and Margot, with Elsa pointing her to the right door, goes to the restroom. Margot asks what's behind the silver door at the end of the corridor, and Elsa replies that there is something very special in there. Margot then goes to have a smoke, and Julian walks in, asking her what it is that she didn't enjoy about the last course. He wants to know why she's not eating, and more importantly, who she really is. Margot avoids answering and returns to her table. Fourth course. The cooks lay down flowers on a white sheet. Julian introduces his sous chef, Jeremy Luden, who has created the next dish called The Mess. Allegorically speaking, Julian mentions about the mess the cooks made to please people they will never know. Jeremy appears nervous. Julian kisses him twice on the cheeks and announces the fourth course one more time. Jeremy then shoots himself in the mouth and kills himself. Chaos ensues and everyone panics, but Julian asks them to calm down as this is part of the show. While the guests try to figure out if this suicide was real or not, the cooks serve the fourth course. The mess is comprised of pressure cooked vegetables, roasted filet, potato confit, beef jus, and bone marrow. The last creation of Jeremy Luden. May he rest in peace. Tyler is eating like nothing has happened, whereas Margot is at a loss. Richard Lebrant, one of the diners, takes his wife, Anne, and tries to leave the restaurant. Elsa informs him that there is no boat to leave on. Richard insists, and Elsa orders the staff to chop off one of his fingers. A calm insanity swarms in, and Margot decides to talk to Julian. The chef says that Margot is not a part of the plan, as someone else was supposed to come in her stead, and wonders where she belongs. Margot asks if she will be spared, and Julian confesses that everyone is going to die tonight. She's told to choose which side she'll be on, either die with the guests or with the cooks. Palate Cleanser The next course is a wild bergamot and red clover tea. The guests try to work on a plan to escape, but that seems impossible. Julian offers them tea and tells them the truth about them being there. This is all a tasting concept. Julian accuses Bloom of shutting down his restaurant and reveals his frustration having to deal with ungrateful clients who could never be satisfied. He accosts his mother and shows everyone that the man who owns the island and the restaurant, Doug Verrick, is hanging outside with angel wings on his back. Julian is punishing those who harmed him. He lowers Doug under the sea and drowns him. Silence. Elsa takes Margot to Julian's office. It is revealed then that Margot used to be a female escort, having slept with Richard Lebrant, hence the recognition between them earlier. Julian takes everyone outside for the next course. Another sous chef, Catherine Keller, confesses how Julian attempted to rape her and kept her locked in the kitchen for eight months. This course is called Man's Folly. Catherine stabs Julian in the thigh with a small pair of scissors and he apologizes to her. Julian then says that the male diners can now try to escape, offering them a head start of 45 seconds before the staff goes after them. The men run away and the women are taken back inside. Shortly afterwards, the hunt begins. Man's folly consists of Dungeness crab, fermented yogurt whey, dried sea lettuce, umeboshi, and kelp. As the men try to escape, the women eat with Catherine. Eventually, all the male diners get caught and taken back to the dining room. The last one is even offered a passard egg, which is made of egg, creme fraiche, and maple. Margot comes clean and says that her real name is Erin. Julian asks Tyler why he is there. Turns out Tyler knew about this dangerous event beforehand and chose Margot to be his date as Miss Westervelt broke up with him prior to the visit. Margot lashes out at him and Julian rewards Tyler by offering him a spot in the kitchen. He asks him to cook something while everyone is watching. Julian taunts a freakishly nervous Tyler, who doesn't know what to do. He prepares an awful dish called Tyler BS, which is an undercooked piece of lamb meat with an unedible shallot leek butter sauce and an utter lack of cohesion. Julian accuses Tyler and his kind of foodies that they ruin the art of cooking. He whispers something in his ear and sends him away. Julian apologizes to everyone and takes Margot in the back. He asks her to bring a barrel in in order to prepare dessert. 
Elsa gives Margot the smokehouse key, and as she leaves, she notices that Tyler has hanged himself. George asks why he is being punished, and Julian tells him that he doesn't like his face, deciding to kill him and Felicity on a whim rather than anything else. Margot leaves the smokehouse, and armed with a knife, heads to the chef's cottage. She sees an exact replica of the restaurant there, and goes to the silver door. Elsa comes and says that she will not be replaced by her. She attacks Margot with a knife, but Margot overpowers her and kills her by stabbing her in the throat. Margot unlocks the silver door and enters a room filled with Julian's belongings. She sees photographs of Julian and a radio transmitter, which she uses. Julian brings out a birthday cake to Bryce, and Margot rolls the barrel into the restaurant. Julian sits with her and tells her how he was a monster, but now he is free of pain and misery. Suddenly, a boat comes, and Julian deducts that Margot has found the radio. Julian has the dining room reorganized as to not arouse any suspicions, and warns the guests to think twice before calling for help, and cause the death of an innocent man. An officer named Dale soon walks into the restaurant and asks if anyone sent out a disturbance call. No one answers, and Dale sees George. Julian asks if he wants an autograph from him, and George writes, help us, on it. Dale takes out his gun and points it at Julian and the rest. The guests plead with him to help, and Dale asks Julian to kneel. But then, he lowers his gun, pulls the trigger, and lights a candle. Apparently, Officer Dale is one of Julian's team. The final course is now prepared. Margot claps her hands and says that she doesn't like Julian's food. She goes on and says that there is no love in any of his dishes. Julian strongly disagrees, and Margot replies that he cooks with obsession and not with love. She also says that he has failed and asks for a good traditional cheeseburger. Julian cooks a delicious, well-made cheeseburger with fries, and Margot takes a bite. She asks to have the rest to go. Julian packs her food and thanks her for dining at Hawthorne. Margaret pays up and takes one last look at the guests before leaving. Julian asks from the rest to pay for their food. Margot makes it to the pier. In the meantime, the cooks paint the floor with raw ingredients and put vests of marshmallows and hats made of chocolate on the diners. Julian grabs a flaming coal with his bare hand and walks to the middle of the dining room. Margot boards the boat and gets away. Julian throws the coal onto the flammable dust on the floor and starts a magnificent fire that envelops everyone and everything. The final course is called S'more, made by marshmallow, chocolate, graham cracker, customers, staff, and restaurant. Margot stops the boat and sees the roaring flames from afar. She starts eating the cheeseburger and wipes her mouth with the restaurant menu.